Coleman with Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District with your conservation report. Today's report is going to solely focus on the 2015 buffer legislation. Yes, I said it, the buffer legislation. I am going to provide a neutral description of what the 2015 buffer legislation is, describe five ways it is intended to enhance Minnesota waters, answer some common questions, and also explain options for landowners both financially and technically. If you would like to follow along with the information that I'm providing today, please visit the Board of Water and Soil, Resource, Soil Resources website at www.bwsr.state.mn.us backslash buffers. In June 2015, Governor Dayton signed into law a new buffer initiative aimed at enhancing protection of our Minnesota waters. A buffer, also known as a riparian filter strip, is a vegetated land adjacent to a stream, a river, lake, or wetland. Buffers help filter out phosphorus, nitrogen, and sediment, and are a very important conservation practice for helping keep water clean. But why buffers? Well, the studies by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency show that buffers are critical to protecting and restoring water quality, healthy aquatic life, and natural stream functions and aquatic habitat due to their immediate proximity to the water. How buffers protect the water is if you're planting trees, the trees hold soil in place via the roots, they use up nutrients, they shade the water, and provide habitat so that root stabilization and soil, uh, um, soil and nutrient absorption is essential to water quality. If you're planting tall native grasses, they also prevent erosion and filter pollutants from running into the stream, and they too provide habitat for wildlife and aquatics. What is required under the new law? The, under the new law, buffer widths will be an average of 50 feet minimum of 30 feet on public waters, a minimum of 16.5 feet on public drainage systems. Buffer recommendations for other waters will be determined by soil and water conservation districts. Not all this information is available as of yet. And how will you know if buffers are required? The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, Minnesota DNR, is in the process of mapping all waters subject to the new requirements. The buffer protection maps are expected to be completed by July 2016. So as of now, the soil and water conservation districts don't even know who, what waters are going to be required for what width or if they are required a buffer. So it's certainly more to come on that from Minnesota DNR in July 2016. How will the program work? Well, the Minnesota Board of Water and Soil Resources, also known as Bowser, will oversee the new law. It's working to get program details developed. Landowners may install buffers on their own at any time or can wait until the buffer protection maps are completed. Again, those are expected to be completed by Minnesota DNR by July 2016. For in the meantime, if you are interested in um, buffering your stream or river, um, river ground, you certainly can contact your Soil and Water Conservation District. The current expected timeline for the new law uh, is specified as July 1, 2017, buffers are to be in place on all public waters. July 1, 2018, buffers are to be in place on public drainage systems. So we do have some time to work out the details and learn more about the new legislation laws of buffers. The new buffer initiative enhances protection of Minnesota waters by building upon existing requirements on the following ways. One, they are expanding the scope of waters covered. Current regu re regulations require 50-foot buffers on public waters and 16.5-foot buffers on only about 20% of public ditches. The new law enhances the public waters requirement by putting it into state statute versus the state rule implemented via county ordinance. It also extends the 16.5-foot requirement to ditches within a benefited area 
of public drainage ditches. Finally, it also provides a process by which SWCDs must set local standards on other waters via local water management and water plan amendments approved by the Board of Water Oil Resources. Setting that timeline for implementation is also an enhancement. Current requirements do not have specific timelines for establishments to buffers. The new law establishes the following timelines. As I stated previously, Public water buffers established by November 1, 2017. Public drainage system by November 1, 2018. Local requirement standards must be developed by July 1, 2017. But also, with all those dates, we do need to remember that the current mapping of what is buffers are needed is not out until July 2016. The new buffer enhancements will also strengthening soil erosion statutes. Current laws prohibit excessive soil loss, but only if a county has adopted a local ordinance. The new law strengthens this area of statute by removing the requirement for a local ordinance and allowing the county, watershed district, or the Board of Water, Soil, and Resor Soil Resources to enforce through an administrative fine process. Appropriating funding. The Clean Water Fund in the Legacy Bill, which is pending, appro um, which was pending, appropriates $5.65 million for programs implementation and $22 million for SWCD capacity. But what about the options for landowners and financial and technical support? There are more than five programs currently available to assist with um, meeting this new buffer legislation. There's federal programs and local, state and local programs. Some federal programs through the Farm Service Agency are the General Con Conservation Reserve Program, also known as CRP, and the Continuous Conservation, Conservation Reserve Program, CCRP. The Natural Resources Conservation Service also has the EQIP Program, Environmental Quality Incentive Program, that can provide financial and technical assistance to agricultural producers that would like to um, improve soil, water, plant, animal, and air related resources. The Conservation Stewardship Program is available, and so is the Agricultural Conservation Easement Program. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has par um, programs available to assist with buffers, and a couple state programs are Reinvest in Minnesota Reserve Program through Bowser and the Conservation Cost Share Program. And don't leave out the Department of Agriculture. They have the Ag BMP loan program and, uh, more recently, the Minnesota Agricultural Water Quality Certification Program that may have some funding to assist with local buffers. If you do have any further questions on the buffer program um, new rules, please do contact the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District, or you can visit our website, in the, or the Bowser's website that I stated earlier. The information provided today was taken from the Board of Water and Soil Resources website at www.bowserbwsr.state.mn.us backslash buffers. Thank you for listening today. This has been Katie Winkleman with your conservation report. Stay informed and make it a great day.